So this is what we're going to build. It's kind of like a Twitter clone, like a very, you know, uh, basic version of Twitter. So username, uh, let's say like Naruto tweet contents, leave it, submit, and then it appears like that. Maybe let's have another one. And then you can see that it's like appearing there. One thing to notice is that this isn't connected to any backend database, which means that nothing is saved. So for example, if I refresh the page, um, it's back to being empty. So if you wanted to extend this project, all you'd have to do is connect it to a database. Um, and that's a pretty interesting task, but just for, the, for this workshop, we'll be doing the front end side only. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're going to be building. I'm just going to quickly add in some more tweets. All right. So whenever you're making a React app, the first step is to do this magical command called npx create react app. Uh, and like the name of your app. So I don't know, bird app, because we're making a Twitter clone. And really like you can even do this yourself. We're also assuming that you have NPM installed. And I think they'll type in the chat some other um, assumptions that we're making of tools that you have. But for now, just follow along with what we're doing on screen and um, I hope that you can also replicate this yourself afterward. Okay, so once you're done that create React app, this is actually going to take a bit of time and we're a bit short on time. So I have one that's already loaded. Um, just going to control C that. Yes, I have one that's already loaded and it is over here. So again, it's completely empty. It's what you'll see if you had made that like finish loading. Um, let's go over here. OK, so I'm going to introduce you to some things you'll see when you first open your project. So the first thing you'll see is this file that's called index.js. This is like the entry point of your app. And um, it's going to look exactly the same. I don't think I changed anything in this, except maybe changing um, an import. Um, it's, yeah. Yes, so thank you, Shab. So there's some link to download npm, node.js, and npx. And app.js is where you'll see um, what is rendered on the screen. So here you see we're rendering it on React DOM. So DOM is like document object model. So it's the representation of a web page. So it's like a tree-like structure that contains all the elements and its properties of a website as its node. Um, but yeah, you don't need to know about that if it's like a bit too advanced right now, but just know that whatever is rendered within these uh, brackets is what you see on the screen. So whenever you want to start your React app, you're just going to do something npm start. If you're wondering why it's npm start, it's just because if you look at your package.json file, you look at your scripts, the start command is, is that. So when this finishes loading, it should appear on the browser, and then you'll be able to see the magic of why React is so cool. It might take a minute, though. So in the meanwhile, I'd also add, like to ask in the poll again, um, how many people have used React before, or like even you know dipped your toes into React? A little bit in the past. That's good. It is really beginner friendly. Um, I would say it's like if you're new to programming, React is the way to go. Cool, so it just loaded. Um, you can see that this is the URL. It's on localhost port 3000. And uh, yeah, there we go. So let's say I wanted to change this to um, Hello Hackers. See, it updates live. So that's really convenient for development because you can just quickly test it and view it at the same time. Okay, so back to what we're going to make. So whenever you wanna start a React project, the first thing you want to do is figure out what components you want. So what is a component? A component's like a building block of code. Um, so the benefit of a component is that you can reuse it uh, with different things inside. You can think of it as like an object. So you can have like components within components. You can have components that you reuse with different items inside. You can, uh, so like the benefit of reusing it is you don't have repeated code and that's in your project. So it just makes it you know, shorter to write and easier. So on this React app right here, you can, like I can right off the bat see three components. 
I'm not sure if you can see three components. So if you can't, try to follow, uh, try to guess which the three components are. So the first component is this form here. It has a text box for the username. It has a text box for the tweet contents, and then has a submit button. So that's going to be the first component we make. The next component is this rectangle tweet. So this tweet has a box, it has a header, and it has some body text. And you can see this tweet component, we're reusing it here, right? We're using it there, 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 as many times as we need. So this is like another component. And the third component is this entire page. So it's always good practice to wrap your whole page in a component because in a real app, we're gonna have more than one page. And um, you can nicely abstract that into like a class, uh, which is a component. Okay, so now that we have our three components, I'm going to create um, files for them. Uh, again, in a real project, you're gonna have way more than three components, but in this project, we have three components. So um, I'm not gonna make a folder called components. I'm just gonna put it straight in the source directory. Uh, so let's call this tweet.js. So that's gonna be this one single rectangle. The next one, let's call it tweetform.js. In the next form, let's, and the next uh, component, let's call it tweetpage.js. So those are our three components. You might notice that app is also a component, right? So it's a functional component. Um, so functional component, it's kind of like Python if you used Python before. So it has a name for the function. It takes in some parameters. This takes in no parameters, but if it did take in parameters, they would be called properties or props for short. Um, and then one thing to note is that your function only returns one thing. So just like in Python, when your function can only return one thing, here it also only returns one thing. So that's why you wanna have like one pair of parent tags that wraps everything you wanna return. And then finally you export it. So it's used by, it can be used by other places in your code. All right, so let's just like that into tweets. I'm just gonna rename this to tweets. All right, so we just have like some basic um, thing. I'm gonna do the same thing. Also, if you've used the div before, this empty tag is pretty much just like empty fragment. So consider it like a div, like HTML style. I'm gonna do the same thing for tweet form just so it's not empty, but it's not returning anything. It's just an empty component for now. And then finally for tweet page. Cool. All right. So the next step we're gonna do is use something that is really handy. It's called um, a CSS library. So I'm gonna use this thing called Tracker UI. Um, so I'd like to ask you guys, oh, there's a question. Okay, good, Shamir is answering. I'd like to ask you guys in the chat, have you ever heard of a CSS library? Heard of Bootstrap? Yes, that's exactly, that's an example. So Chakra UI is my current favorite CSS library because it's so easy to use. Um, but what it does is, see over here, we're defining our own components. We're creating it, we're styling it, but it's actually like a lot of work if we wanted to define a component for every single thing on the page. Like for example, let's look at this page. This button is a component. This header is a component. This foot box, search bar is a component. It's gonna be a lot of those from scratch. So what these CSS libraries do, it lets us borrow someone else's code kind of and use a component that's pre-made. And if you're wondering what kind of components, there's this long list. We can use a button, checkbox, input, select, slider, switch. You can really like explore this. It's pretty fun to look at um, the app. So we're gonna add Chakra to our project. Just click get started. Um, so installation, we're just gonna copy that and then put it into our project. It's also gonna take some time to run. So I kind of let it run beforehand. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is add chakra providers. So that just makes sure that everything in our app is wrapped by this chakra provider. So it applies that styling. And styling is just what it looks like. Um, it's like colors, shapes, fonts, okay. So over here, we can see that we need to just wrap our entire app 
with chakra provider. So instead of having these empty fragments, you can just stick chakra provider there. Uh, and it's going to yell because it doesn't know what chakra provider is, so we need to import it. You can just copy this import statement. Great. Um, so one thing you might notice, okay, it's not going to look any different because it's refreshed. Let's use an example. Um, I'm going to use the tweet component that we just defined here. So remember, we exported tweet over here, which means that we can now use it as if it was another component, as if it was like, um, like a paragraph or as if it was a title, something like that, we can use it as that. So we have a tweet, we need to import it though. So let's do an import. So import tweet from, it's the same folder. So it should just be tweet. Yes. Okay, now we should be able to use it. All right, it's still empty. So we have to put something in here first. Um, let's just write hello. I mean, hi. So this is now loading high, that's good because it's rendering what is inside tweet, which is high. So now let's try using a chakra component. How about we do a box? So you can just search up box on chakra UI. We need to import it first and then we use it. And it even gives us a really helpful example. Um, I recommend using the documentation of chakra UI a lot. It's really helpful. So. Here's what we do. We are going to write box and then write maybe hello. Let's give it a background. Um, this is a predefined chakra UI color. Okay, so now what does it look like? Cool, so we have hello and we have a blue box. Um, let's do a little bit more styling. Let's give it um, a radius, so border radius equals full. These are all styling props. So if you're familiar with CSS, um, that's what this does. Okay, so it is rounded now. What else can we do? Um, we can also make it centered. Uh, text align equals center. And now it's centered. Yeah, I think that looks good enough. Okay, so if you notice over here, each of our tweets has a header and some body text. Uh, that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna give it a heading and we're gonna give it some body text. So body text and the heading is like the username. So here you can see that's a username and the tweet contents. Tweet contents. And it's yelling because there's no heading because we didn't import it yet. So let's just add that to our import. Cool, let's see what that looks like. All right, so this is what we got. We have a username, we have tweet content, and it's inside of this box. Uh, yeah, I think it looks good for our tweet. So our next step is going to be um, using our tweet page. All right, so for tweet page, we said over here that the tweet page contains like all of this stuff. It contains the form, it contains each of these tweets, and it's kind of like in a grid. So let's let's do that. Let's start by importing tweet because that's what we want on this page. So we import tweet from tweet.js. And now we can try putting a tweet on this page. And you might notice nothing, nothing changed because we aren't rendering anything. We didn't change anything in the render. So you have to go back to our app.js page. Instead of tweet, let's instead render tweet page. And then we just change our import statement accordingly. How are we doing on the time? Okay, good. So now on tweet page, we can maybe have like three of the same tweets. And now it looks like that. Um, I'm wondering if maybe we can 
add some spacing. Okay, we can add some spacing a bit later, but oh, right. Here's what we can do to add spacing. Inside of each of these tweets, let's add a margin and maybe some padding. So margin of three. Margin is the distance away from like outside of this thing. So now it's some space around. And then padding is the space inside. So padding will, I think you'll see it, but padding will give you some space around the border of the box inside. So that looks a little bit better. All right, so back onto our tweet page. So we can keep doing this, but it's kind of like copy pasting and that's not what we want. So another thing that we're gonna do is um, each username has, sorry, each tweet has a username and tweet content, right? Let's give us some tweets. So let's say, const tweets um, and just like you might be familiar with in python let's make a list so let's say username is um naruto and then pat and uh, not password content equals leave it and then let's do the same thing let's give um let's give sakura a tweet like 200 at Q, um, and maybe another one. Another tweet. Okay, so we've defined some constant tweets. And now what we're going to do, you might be familiar with this with Python or Java, but we're going to loop through our array of tweets and we're going to render it on a page. So JavaScript does this thing called mapping, which means um, essentially we're going to go through each of these objects and we're going to create a one-to-one -one mapping between items in this array and things that we render onto the screen. So that way we don't have to keep copy pasting this. We can just have one loop that loops through tweets and then renders what we want. So we can do that. Let's start with um, curly braces, which means JavaScript uh, code. And then we're going to do tweets.map. And um, we're going to call uh, object destructuring. So each of these tweets is actually comprised of two things. It's comprised of a username and of content. So we're going to do username comma content. And then we're going to use an arrow function, which is just useful in JavaScript. And we're going to return what we want to render. So what do we want to render? We want to render a tweet. Um, with username equal to username and content equal to content. And then we'll just close, close that off. Okay, so now it will be mapping through this, creating a item for each, um, each item in this list. But you might notice that it hasn't appeared yet because we haven't set our tweet to take in any parameters. So remember how before we were saying that a function can take in parameters? We can do that um, with tweet. So parameters and React is just called properties or props. Uh, and we'll do some same thing as before. We'll do username and content is equal to props because props contains both the username and a content in like an array. And now instead of hard coding username, we're gonna use the username that we just defined. So we have to do curly braces because JavaScript, and then same thing here, content. There we go. So now you can see that the tweets that we defined up here just appeared on the page, which is kind of cool because now you can just add more like tweets here, like another one. And now it just appears up there. So that's pretty good. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is make it so that we have a form that the user can type something in and then they can click submit and it will be added to this array. But that this array is like stuff that will be rendered on the screen. So that's our last um, task for today, which is the form, tweet form. Okay, so for a tweet form, we're going to use something in Chakra UI called input. I'm actually just going to search for it. Input. Uh, 
let's import it first. And let's use this one, controlled input. So you can see I'm typing something here and it's appearing up here. That's exactly what we want. So we're going to use it. Um, this is the sample code that they give us. So we're going to copy this part, which is the input. And we will stick it into our form. OK, I'm just going to comment out this for now so you can see what it looks like. And again, it's not going to show on our page yet because we haven't rendered it anywhere. So we have to look at what is this page rendering? It's tweet page. And we need to import tweet form just like we imported tweet. So let's do that. Tweet form. Cool. And now we're just going to use it. Tweet form. There we go. So again, I didn't actually do anything. I just copy pasted what was on the tracker UI page, but um, see, there's your text box. Cool, that's what we wanted. Um, let's do the same thing, but here we see we need two text box. So we'll do two, let's copy paste. All right, I'm just gonna change the placeholder. Um, the first one is gonna say username. And the second one is going to say tweet contents. Um, I'm also going to style it a little bit. I'm going to add a margin of three. Okay, that's a little bit better. Um, I'm going to make it round, perhaps, border radius full. Okay, it looks rounder. And I'm going to do the same thing for the second button. There we go. Just looks a little nicer. Oh, wait, this is okay. There's space. To get rid of the space, I'm going to make it left margin instead of full margin. There we go. So it looks a bit better. And the next thing we do, we need a button. So here you can see there's a submit button. Let's do the same thing. Shocker UI, search up button. And copy paste. <laughs> so over here, we can just use button. And what do we want our button to say? We want it to say, I don't know, tweet. It's going to yell because we didn't import button. So we'll import button. All right, Let's see what that looks like. Uh, it looks kind of ugly, so I'm going to style it a little bit. Um, so let's make it with maybe 100% width. Maybe let's make it round. So border radius equals full. Um, let's give it a margin. OK, looks good enough. <laughs> OK, so it says tweet. We have username and tweet contents, tweet, and then it appears down there. Cool. So the last step here, I guess also the most important step is to actually make it work. Because you can have your full front end and it can look nice, but it also doesn't work. So sure, it needs to be able to type something, type something, and then click tweet, and it should be able to appear. Right? That's our that's our goal. Um, in order to do this, we need to look at these two lines that we commented out: value and then on change. So value is what is stored inside of input. So let me change value to like hello. Okay, so now it says hello. Um, and then same thing for here. I can change value to like hello too. And this is there. Okay, so you're also gonna have to trust me on this, but I'm trying to type something and it's not gonna let me type because I'm setting the value to hello and the value is not allowed to change, right? Because I defined it to be the string hello. I want it to be able to be something variable that I can change, the user can change. and that is where we're going to look at the second line that we commented out called the on change. All right, so for the important uh, thing for React, so React has this thing called use state. Um, so let's say you want to keep track of the state of something on your page, like the state of this text box text. Um, then you can use one of React's hooks called use state. Uh, the only argument the use state hook is the initial state. 
if you look at the chakra UI example, they actually give us a really good example of it over here. So let's just copy that. In. We'll stick it outside of our return statement. All right, and we need to import it. So let's import that. Import use state from React. And then we don't need to use react.useState, we can just use use state directly. Okay, I'm gonna close this so you get more space. So this has two lines here. Uh, the first line is our use state uh, line. So you say only has one argument, which is over here, and it's the initial state. So you might notice over here in our text box, the initial state is empty, which is why there's an empty string here. And we want that for our text box too. We want the initial state to be empty. And what does it return? So you state, again, it's a function. So it returns two things. Um, the first thing it returns is a, a variable that um, is the current state. And the next thing it returns is a function that updates that variable. So these are the two things. It returns an array, basically. So now that we know this, we can set the objects of the array. So the first item, I guess the zero with item in the array, is going to be value. The second item in the array, which is the, the setter for when you want, like the trigger of when your state changes is set value. And um, they're going to change this because if the value is kind of vague, let's call this username. Let's call this set username. The next line here is our handler. So this is whenever our input is changing, we have an on change. So let's just comment that out. Let's uncomment that. So on change, we want it to do something. We want it to update um, what is stored inside the username variable. So that's when we can use, instead of set value, we'll do set username. And that's pretty much it. Instead of set, instead of handle change, we're gonna call this handle username change. So it's less ambiguous. Cool. Uh, let's change this. So instead of um, hard coding what value should be, now we wanna use our variable, our state variable, username. Ta-da, now I can type in it. That's what we wanted. We're gonna copy and paste and do the same for the second text box. This time I'm gonna call it, and then set contents, and then handle content change. Set content, um, and then set content here. And then same thing over here. We'll uncomment this line and we'll do handle, oops, handle content change. Again, this is really useful if you can check Chakra UI's documentation because they give a fully functional like, example of it. Uh, okay. And again, over here, we're not gonna hard code it to hello too. We're gonna use our new state variable called content. Okay, Ta -da, we can now type in both of these. That's what we wanna do. The final step here is we want the tweet button to work. We want on click of this tweet button, it should create a new tweet that has our username and tweet contents in it. Um, so in order to do that, um, we need our tweet form to actually take in a parameter, which is, Going to be kind of strange, but it's going to be a function parameter. We're going to call this function add tweet. And then for our button, we want our button on click to handle add tweet. So we're going to use again some JavaScript code with uh, this notation. Everyone, I wonder why it's red. I guess it's not, the line is done yet. So add tweet.
on click. Oh, I didn't do an equal there. Okay, there we go. I was just forgetting an equal sign. So as always, buttons usually have an on click because on the button click, you want it to do something. So in this case, we want it to do an add tweet. Uh, yeah. So what is it going to do for this add tweet? It will take in um, these two values that we had in our uh, two variables. So in a first text box, the value was username. Second text box, the value is content. We're going to take in what is in these two text boxes and give it to add tweet. So let's give it username and let's give it content. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm just making sure I have my syntax right here. Okay, I was forgetting brackets. Now I can have a semicolon. Okay, because this is JavaScript code in the middle. That's why we use the curly braces. All right, so we have added our tweet. However, this function doesn't actually exist yet. We use as a parameter, so now we need to actually write this function. So our last step, uh, on tweet page, we're going to create this function called add tweet. So const add tweet. And what is it going to take in? It's going to take in a username and content. Those are the two things in our text boxes. And what is it going to do? It's going to do this set tweet. So again, we over here, we used our state variable for um, username and we used the use state hook. We're going to do the same thing on tweet page because as you notice, when I type something here, the state of this page changes when I click this page. So when I click submit. So I want to do the same thing that we did on tweet form on tweet page. So over here, I'm going to do this um, const tweets and then set tweets. Again, this should look familiar because we did it right over here. But the difference is that instead of having an empty string here, the initial state is an empty array, right? Because we don't need this anymore because we don't need to hard code anything. So tweets is the variable that is used to store our state. Set tweets is like the trigger that tells React that something needs to change on this page. So we're going to call set tweet. Um, and then what are we going to do? We're going to append to this array, right? We're going to, we don't want to delete all of the existing tweets. We just want to append a new tweet. Uh, so we're going to do set tweet with our new tweet. And what is our new tweet? Uh, it's going to be an array that has username and content in it. And then we're going to use, um, it's called spread to append to what was already in tweets. Cool, so that is add tweet. Okay, so our final step is to give add, oh, I called it set tweet here. Our final step is to give add tweet into the, uh, as a parameter for, as an argument for tweet form. So whenever we call tweet form over here, we're gonna give it add tweet. Okay, so it fails to compile, so I'm just gonna recompile it. And then we'll see what it looks like. Well, I think you forgot to import the use case. Oh, right, true. Thank you. I'm gonna steal this import statement from this page. Just paste it there. And it might take a, a while for it to load. Yes, as she says, control C, control V is the most essential thing you need.
this is taking its um, taking its time. Okay, there we go. It has, um, let's try this now, let's try. Yay, it works, it shows up on the page. But there's one problem, and you know what the problem is? Here, I'll, I'll try. Can you show the tweak component again? Sure. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll do it again. Okay, the problem here is that when I clicked tweet, nothing like disappeared in this text box, which means the user now has to like delete it themselves and it's inconvenient. Over here, when they type something and they click submit, it clears it, right? That's what we want it to do and it's not doing that. So what we need to do is on, um, let's see, on our form page, we wanna add to the buttons on click. So right now on click, all it does, it adds the username. Sorry, it adds the tweet. On top of that, we want it to reset username and contents. So we have our handy function here, set username and uh, set content. So we're going to use that. And we're gonna use it with an empty string because we want it to be empty. So let's try that out. There we go, so the username is like emptied. So we need to do the same thing still for content. So I'm just gonna copy paste that. Over here, we see that our, con our uh, handler for content, the thing that changes is set content. So we're gonna call this set content. And this resets it to an empty. Okay. So let's do a final testing of our app. Um, which character should I use this time? I've been using Naruto characters this entire time, but okay, maybe it's time to use Sailor Moon. Hello. Cool. It works. Um, let's try another one. That also updates. Um, maybe a last one, U of T. Um, and this that updates. Cool. So that's pretty much what we wanted to make, and uh, we have successfully gone there. So the last thing we do is just push this to our repo so that we can deploy it. And I think deploying is like the fun part. So she will take it away while I push. All right. Time to deploy this amazing website that Navias programmed right in front of us. Let me just get the code that Navi wrote. Um, is it pushed? Okay. Uh, one moment. Okay, it's pushed. All right. Uh, All right, uh, let me just share my screen. Oh, one little, okay, yeah. Um, there we go. All right, can you guys see the screen? Oh, yeah. Yep. All right. Um, yep. So I have all this code that we wrote right here uh, on my screen. So. All right, it's time to deploy it on the web so that everyone can access it. So traditionally, you would have to like have a own CPU or a server which will hold all the important websites, uh, website files that you'll need so that uh, whenever everyone goes to the link that you provide, they can be loaded into the browser. 
uh, and this is a very expensive uh, matter if we don't use services like Firebase. Um, so let me just go to the Firebase console. So you just have to uh, just type Firebase console, um, the post link. All right, I've already signed it, but if it's your first time accessing this, you'll probably have to sign in or make an account. It's pretty simple. And you'll have this um, project page where you'll have all of the current projects that you need. All right. Um, so let's first create a new project. Okay, let's call it Twitter Flow. And a new. So these, uh, this thing over here is called Google Analytics. Uh, this will give you some data about the site that you'll be hosting on Firebase, for like how many users visited it and many more things. But right now we don't need it. So I'm just gonna, I just disabled it. So let's just go ahead and create the project. So this takes some time. So let's, tie, let's go back to the code that Navi wrote here. So now since Navi had already downloaded the Chakra UI libraries and any other libraries that she was using there, uh, I got to use the same thing over here. So to do that, let's first CD into the Twitter client folder. Uh, yeah. All right. Now I have that. And now I'm going to install all the libraries that Navi had uh, installed right in the beginning of the workshop. So for that, you just have to do npm install. Uh, we'll start installing everything. And let's see. There we go. Okay, our project is ready on Firebase. Um, let's go ahead. All right, so this is your new project and you're inside the main Firebase console. All right, so Firebase was built so that uh, developers wouldn't have to deal with having their own servers or CPUs that they have to maintain. And so what Google did was like, have these bunch of functions all clubbed together and just omit the need of like making a server from scratch. So Firebase like provides authentication, they provide uh, databases, they provide storage, hosting, which we'll be looking into functions, which are your traditional uh, API requests. Yeah, so it's basically a backend as a service and you don't have to bother about maintaining any kind of server. So it's really take that headache and that pain of you, yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and see what's there in hosting. Okay, let's just get started. Okay, so Firebase will give you the steps that you need to um, have your site ready for uh, deploying it on the internet. All right, so this is the first step. We, all we have to do is run this command and what this is going to do is install uh, the library called Firebase Tools. It's just like the uh, just like a li uh, like how Chakra UI was a library. Firebase Tools in itself is also a library that Google has provided. So let's copy that, go back into the code, and uh, let me just install that. All right. All right. So just installing to that time, let's go ahead and see what's the next step. All right, so the next step is to, okay, once we have that downloaded, we have to run the command Firebase login, followed by Firebase email. Okay, let's see, go back, it's done. Okay, it's almost done. So, yeah, there we go. All right, so the next command was to run Firebase login. All right, do that. Okay, so it shows that I've already logged in with my email ID. If you haven't, it's probably gonna give you a link that you just have to click and follow to have yourself authorized. That's all you need to do. All right, uh, so before, okay, one more thing. Before we run Firebase in it, we have to get our code ready to be deployed on the project. That means having all of these files like add.js, add index.js, all of them compiled into files that our browser will understand. So to do that, we have to run the command npm run build. So let's start. 
playing. Okay, there you go. Do you see this build folder? The, the, uh, this folder will contain all the necessary files that your browser will need to understand what's going on on this website. Right? So this is what's called a production build. Right? We give it some time to run that. Again. There we go, compiled successfully. So now we have all the files that we need for the browser to understand what our website is or what it's doing. All right, so now the next step was to run the command Firebase in it. Uh, let's see what that does. Keep pasting it. All right. All right, so this is the command line interface for Firebase. So the first option is to choose the feature that we want to use. Since we want to host our website, we will select that by, um, so it says press space to select, so let's select that and then enter to complete selection. All right, so we have selected hosting and now we have to select a project. But if you remember, we have already created a project in the Firebase console. So let me just use an existing project. All right, it's giving me the projects that I currently have in Firebase. So it was Twitter clone that we created. So let me select that. All right. So, uh, okay, let's go along with this. So the next step is it's asking us to uh, tell us the public directory that we want to use. So this directory is the build folder that we created right now. So all you have to do is type in build, press enter. All right, do you want to configure it as a single app? Yep, let's do that. We don't want to link it with GitHub right now. So let's say no to that. Um, we don't want to replace our index that'll wipe out the code that we, were, that we wrote. All right, so let's say no to that. All right. Firebase initialization is complete. You'll see uh, it built some files for us, so we don't have to bother about that. Firebase is taking care of that. All right, the third step. Okay, when you're ready, that's the only thing we have to do to actually deploy it. Let's copy paste it. Clear, paste, uh, let's go. Okay, again, I think it should take just a few seconds. There we go. Start building. Okay. There we go. It's on the web. Let's actually see if it worked. Uh, they gave us the URL on which it's posted. Uh, let's just follow that. Uh, there we go. It works. Hey. Hello. Yeah, it's the same thing. Pretty cool, right? In just like three steps, we were able to deploy it on the internet. Let me copy paste the link so that you guys can visit too. Okay. Uh, there we go. You guys can access this site too now. It's on the internet. And uh, oh, sorry. Uh, let me just go back to the Firebase console. And yep, okay. And here the console, console. Okay. So now once you have deployed, you get some more information on on the hosting page. So what it's showing, uh, you can see it's showing uh, the current status and files that it uploaded. You can see there are 20 files that uploaded. These files are from the build folder that we had made. So if you were using uh, the traditional hosting services, you would have to keep track of how large these files are, and then you'll have to maintain that server so that you don't run out of space. But over here, I can keep on making more new files and like keep on building and pushing it and hosting it, and I don't have to care about how much space I have there. Firebase is going to do that for me. It's pretty easy. Just in three steps, we have it on the internet. 